generational, but not valuable. That seems to be the common theme when people discuss Kyle Hamilton, safety out of Notre Dame, and in terms of where he should go in the 2022 NFL draft. Just for reference, Kyle Hamilton is a freak. He's a freak of nature. He is a specimen. He is unlike maybe any safety prospect we've scouted in the past century, for being totally honest, right? 6'4", 220, 33-inch arms, 9-inch hands, and an 80-inch wingspan. Kid is huge. Kid is big. He plays a safety position, but he can basically do anything you want on the football field. He can play cover one, single high. He can play two high. He can play man coverage on tight ends. He can play in the slot. He can, you know, fit run lanes. He can, you know, blitz and rush the passer even at times. He hits like a goddamn truck, right? Being 6'4", being 220, even though he plays safety, he can hit like a linebacker. He can cover like a you know corner at times. He can basically do it all. I'm sure if you line him up and nose, he can probably get through the center and make some play in the backfield. He can do everything, man. He's really special. You're going to watch this highlight reel that I have playing in the background here. The plays he makes are just insane. There's no safety in this year's class and no safety since Derwin James, honestly, out of college can make the plays that Kyle Hamilton makes. Kid is just that special. But there's been a lot of talk as to how high he should go in the draft, which team should take him. And for some reason, a lot of fan bases, a lot of teams, fans don't really want Kyle Hamilton, or at least don't want to spend a premium pick on him. Whenever there's mocks about the Jets taking him at four or the Giants taking him at five or the Panthers taking him at six, you see a lot of fans on Twitter kind of outcry and say, no, we don't want him. That's too high. Don't pay a safety, right? We took Jamal Adams super high. That didn't work out. We don't want Kyle Hamilton or we have other needs we have to address and fix, right? Even at 10, you see people saying, you know, like for the Jets, for example, like if there's Kyle Hamilton, like Jermaine Johnson, they'd rather take Jermaine Johnson at 10 than Kyle Hamilton. And I'm like, you know, what are you, what are you talking about, man? A lot of people think that safety is just a devalued position. And for what it's worth, it's not based entirely out of reality, right? If you look at some of the highest paid safeties in the NFL, the top 12 highest paid safeties, besides Jamal Adams and like Harrison Smith, I guess, most of the guys make under 15 million. Some of the best safeties in the NFL, like John Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, don't even make 10 million per year. Right? Jesse Bates on the franchise tag at 13 million, Kevin Byard, Eddie Jackson at 14 million. Right? Compared to quarterbacks and offensive tackles and pass rushers and even cornerbacks and receivers, these salaries don't even come close. And on top of that, not, uh, not only are they not paid super highly, a lot of these top safeties you see like Eddie Jackson, like Buda Baker, like Justin Simmons, like Jesse Bates, like John Johnson, they're all, you know, third, fourth, fifth round picks, second round picks. They're all a bunch of day two, day three guys. So the incentive to take a safety super high when most of, these, most of the top safeties in the NFL are not first round picks. And on top of that, when a lot of them aren't even paid super highly, is not, you know, the incentive's not really there. And a lot of people don't really want to do that. Right. You compare this directly to cornerback salaries and where cornerbacks are drafted, you see all the top corners in the NFL. Many of them are first round picks. Many of them are top 15 picks and they're paid on average much higher. Same with offensive tackles, same with pass rusher, same with quarterback. So teams want to prioritize getting, you know, quarterbacks, linemen, pass rushers, corners and receivers. And that's very valid. That makes a lot of sense. I totally get it in that regard. But Kyle Hamilton's different. Kyle Hamilton's different. Kyle Hamilton's special. He's not just a safety. He can do everything you want on a defensive, you know, out of a defensive player. He can do every single thing. Like I said, there's no, there's nothing he can't do. Nothing he can't do. And if you actually compare him directly to Derwin James, you'll see right here, Derwin James, 6'2", 2'15", 78 and 5 eighths of an inch wingspan, 40 inch vertical, 11 foot broad. Kyle Hamilton, 6'4", 2 extra inches, 220, a little heavier, basically the same wingspan, basically the same vertical, basically the exact same broad jump. Derwin James is an athletic freak. Derwin James is the best safety in the NFL, and I don't think it's particularly close. Kyle Hamilton, in terms of profile and build, is very similar to him. If you watch his college tape, I think it's just as good. You could argue in some cases maybe even better. In my opinion, the, the ceiling for Kyle Hamilton in terms of where he can go in the draft is like number two overall. I think starting with the second pick in the draft with the Lions, I think you could take him there. I think the Texans could take him at three. I think the Jets could take him at four. I think the Giants could take him at five. I think any team beyond the first overall pick and only because the Jaguars have to get a pass rusher and or fix the offensive line with a you know solidified player, any team after second overall, I think could take him. And you see like, you know, Lions Twitter, for example, talking about imagine if their starting safety duo was Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams. For those of you that don't know, Marcus Williams used to play under Aaron Glenn in New Orleans, and Aaron Glenn is now the defensive coordinator for the Lions, so there could be a connection there, and the Lions need a safety, they got a lot of money, they might want to draft other positions, so paying Marcus Williams makes a lot of sense. If you're starting a safety duo, it's Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams, and if you get Jeff Okuda back healthy from injury and he plays good, along with Jerry Jacobs, their undrafted corner who played really well, that could be a really, really good secondary, so Lions at two could definitely work. We also got this example over here, where the Jets get came on Thibodeau at four, because adding a pass rusher to that defensive line that already has Quinton Williams and uh, Carl Lawson and Sheldon Rankins would be quite insane. Uh, John Franklin Myers as well. 
that could be really cool. And then getting Kyle Hamilton at 10, if he somehow lasts till 10, which I don't see a reality where he does, but if he does taking him at 10 is also really, really good. You definitely don't want to pass on, pass on him at 10, <laughs> getting, getting the best player in the draft at, you know, nine spots afterwards, truly insane. And I know there's been some talk about Kyle Hamilton's 40 time, not being super high, right? He ran a four, five, nine. A lot of people thought he'd run much faster, myself included. I honestly thought he might run a high four, three, low four, four, seeing a four, five, nine was quite surprising, but just for reference, right? Kyle Hamilton is six, four, two twenty, And when you compare him to 40 times of other top safeties in the NFL, like Justin Simmons, like Harrison Smith, John Johnson, right? Even Jamal Adams and Marcus Williams, it's basically the same 40 time while being much bigger and much taller. And he's running just as fast as they are. He also, I don't think was fully healthy in the 40 yard dash. He looked a bit limpy and looked a little bit off when he was running it. That could be part of it too. But regardless, I don't think 40 yard dash time is the most crucial staff for a safety, especially when the film shows that he can cover the entire field. We can see in this play right over here, he's in center field and he's literally able to read the quarterback all the way and comes in and makes an interception. This is range. This is range. This is playing speed. Forget what he runs at the combine, right? Look at this play right here. He starts all the way on the far side, right hash of the field, basically waiting for the ball to be snapped. Ball is snapped. He comes literally from off the screen running all the way over as the ball's in the air, intercepts the pass before the receiver can pick it off or pick it up. Great fucking play. Like, don't let that four six fool you, right? Don't let that four six four five nine fool you. He has range. He can cover ground. He can make all the plays that you want. We're seeing it throughout this highlight video that I'm playing for you guys. He can literally do everything. Don't let up, you know, a one. Don't let one run at the combine deter you from him and you know make all of that invalidated when the film shows that he can play and he can play fast, right? So he runs just as fast, if not faster, than almost every single top safety in the NFL. He has very sim his very similar measurables and comparables to Derwin James, who, in my opinion, is the last safety prospect who even comes close to Kyle Hamilton. I think they're about the same level. But besides that, I don't think any other safety, even Jamal Adams, who people did like a lot, Jamal Adams, as good as he was, could never play that free safety position the way Kyle Hamilton can. Also, also not as big as Kyle Hamilton, didn't have the range that Kyle Hamilton had. So he's, he's insane. He's legit. He is that dude. Jets at four, Jets at 10, Lions at two, all these different things. We see Robert Sala talking about taking the safety top 10, right? Depends on how good he is. I call them unicorns. I never want to take a linebacker in the first round, but Tremaine Edmonds was sitting there. He's a unicorn in the linebacker world. Same thing with safety. In my opinion, Kyle Hamilton is even more of a unicorn than uh, Tremaine Edmonds because he can do a lot more than Tremaine Edmonds can. He could basically play Tremaine Edmonds' role and also be a full-time free safety he has a passer rating of 25.6 when in coverage, which is insanely low. I think when you spike the ball into the ground, that's like a 38.3 or something. So you're better off spiking the ball into the ground every single play versus throwing at Kyle Hamilton in like 830 career cover snaps. He only gave up one touchdown, and that was an underthrown ball by Desmond Ritter while Kyle Hamilton was in perfect position to pick that off. But the ball was so late to the point where he overplayed it, and then the receiver was able to get open and score a touchdown. Kind of bullshit, but basically that's the only touchdown he's given up in his entire college career. That includes that playing against Alabama, that includes playing against Clemson, against some pretty good competition at times as well. Like I'm saying, kid is special, kid is legit. And I don't know, it's weird. I've, over the past like few months, especially early on in the draft process back in Jan and Feb, you see a lot of people kind of not wanting Kyle Hamilton. You see a lot of mocks where he was going second, third, fourth, fifth overall. A lot of fan bases were like, no, we don't want him. We want the, you know, want Evan Neal. We want Kevin Thibodeau. We want, you know, so and so, even like Ahmad Gardner. A lot of people want Ahmad Gardner over Kyle Hamilton. And well, like I said, like I mentioned before, I understand prioritizing tackle and pass rusher and corner and quarterback over safety. I get it, but Hamilton's better than all those guys. Hamilton's the best player in this class besides Tyler Linderbaum. He is easily the best player at his position. It's not even close to anybody else in this class, right? He has hall of fame potential. He has best top two safety in the NFL potential as a rookie. If he's lucky enough to fall to a decent team that has a decent pass rush, he will fucking eat. He can ball hawk for days give him, you know, give him some free running lanes with a good defensive line in front of him. He can definitely, you know, make some insane plays in the backfield. If the corners around him, especially are half decent at all, and he gets easy coverage matchups and pass rush is good. He can, he will destroy worlds. He will destroy worlds. He will break records. He as a safety might break a bunch of records. He might be the best safety in the NFL as a rookie. I love Derwin James. I don't want to disrespect him in any capacity, but Kyle Hamilton is crazy. He is basically Derwin James was slightly bigger. And I think if he was healthier, I think he could run a faster 40. And regardless, like we've seen in his tape, in his highlights, like the one play we saw against Florida State, he can cover the entire field. He can come off the screen from the right hash all the way to the very left sideline and pick a ball off, track it, everything. He can do it all. He can do it all. He is legit. 
if you take him at two, you should be happy. Take him at three, you should be happy. Texans need help at every single position on their team. You can't say no to any good player. Hamilton can be your defensive cornerstone for a long time. Jets at four, if you miss out on you know Thibodeau and Hutch and an alignment that you want, don't take a receiver there. Don't reach for one. Don't don't reach for a mediocre pass rusher. Don't take Jermaine Johnson or somebody up there. I see Jets fans saying, you know, maybe take Jermaine Johnson at four, Trevon Walker at four. They're, they're good players. Jermaine Walker has a pretty high ceiling, but Hamilton is by far the better player. He produced more right out the gate. He is a generational talent. You don't pass up generational talents, right? And Jets fans, I know that Jamal Adams and that whole trade and everything did burn you guys. I know that it's basically blown up in the Seahawks faces now that they got to move on from Russell Wilson and release Bobby Wagner and him. Jamal Adams is not even healthy last year and he's getting paid a lot of money and the Seahawks didn't have a first round pick until today in this year's draft. I get all of that, but just because that's how that played out for Jamal Adams does not mean that that's who Kyle Hamilton is. It doesn't mean that's how it'll go for you guys. If you do draft him, if you get him on your team, be happy. Don't be disappointed. I don't want to see people being like, oh, we drafted a safety in the top five, top eight when we could have had, you know, mediocre pass rusher or lesser offensive lineman or some receiver when receivers are deep every single year. And I know Jets fans want Sauce Gardner really badly, and I am not going to disagree if they take him at four. I think he's a great player, although I personally think Derek Stingley is a little better, but that's for another day. But Kyle Hamilton at four is absolutely worth taking. He's worth taking at two, if I'm being totally honest. I know that the Lions need a pass rusher. I know that they probably will take Thibodeau or Hutchinson, and that's totally fine. If you add him to that defensive line, that can make that defense much better. I fully get it. But if I'm if I'm a team and I need a good player and I'm a bad team that just needs quality players, I take Hamilton. I take Hamilton every single day. Right. He can play almost he can play basically every position in the backfield outside of maybe like outside corner one. He can play slot. He can play free. He can play strong. He can play at linebacker. He can play, you know, any linebacker position or at least definitely weak side and strong side. Maybe not middle linebacker, but Sam will nickel slot money, like whatever position you want him to play, whatever you want him to do, he can do it. He's done it his entire career. He's going to continue to do it in the NFL for whichever team gets lucky enough to draft him. I don't know where he'll go exactly. That's like the one big mystery of this draft, kind of how high can he go? Like I said, I think his ceiling's two. I think his floor is wherever. I think any single team after two would love to have him. I think NFL front offices watching his tape will really, really like him, especially in today's NFL where everything's so offensive based and there's so many different ways to get points, create, you know, separation and just have big plays and so many different things. Having a safety who is 6'4", who is 220, who can hit like a linebacker and play single high and have that range and have that length is just so valuable and so crucial. And like I said, if you put a decent pass rush in front of him and a couple of competent, competent DBs around him and let him kind of do what he does best, which is just make plays and be like, you know, that true defensive terminator, I think it could be beautiful. I think it could be disastrous for every other team that plays against Cal Hamilton. I think he can make them pay for their mistakes. I think it'll be really, really fun to watch wherever he goes, wherever wherever he lands. Jets take him at four, Jets take him at 10, Lions take him at two, Texans take him at three, Giants take him at five or seven. I think Falcons at eight could be an amazing spot. I'd love to see that happen over there. Then maybe Washington at 11, definitely the Ravens at 14. Like There's no way he gets past the Ravens at 14. If you had, if you put Kyle Hamilton on the Ravens with how they run their defense with all, you know, the amount of pass rushing and blitzing and everything and letting their safeties kind of roam free, especially with, you know, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey as your two outside corners already, it'd be fucking insane. Absolutely worth taking super high kid has the measurables has the tape has the film is a generational prospect i see a lot of people kind of talking down on him saying he's a safety don't take a safety high he's just a safety you know a lot of teams have safeties that don't do too much whatever it is it doesn't it's no reason not to take Hal hamilton it's no reason not to add a generational hall of fame level prospect to your defense to your team especially when he's super young and has room to get better and grow even more super super stoked about that uh, but yeah, feel free to leave your thoughts on where your team's picking in the draft and where you think Kyle Hamilton would go. If you want him on your team, if you don't, why or why not? And if you guys could drop a like and subscribe, that'd be really appreciated. Always helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for stopping by.